dear students today we will be discussing about thermochemical conversion process and how power can be generated by using this process and its design aspects of course we will be learning the advanced gasification technologies and some of the challenges associated with biomass gasification what is thermochemical conversion it is nothing but conversion of solid fuel into a liquid or gaseous fuel through heating so why we are so much so interested about thermochemical conversion what is the motivation behind it motivation goes something like improvement in the heating value of the fuel by rejecting non condensable components such as water and nitrogen removal of elements such as sulfur and nitrogen in the fuel which when oxidized can constitute harmful emission and reduction in hydrogen to carbon mass ratio of a fuel so these are the attempts we are going to make suppose if we are interested to reduce the hydrogen to carbon mass ratio then how we will go for it so we will take help of van carvelen diagram for solid fuels so here what we can see this is for biomass in broader oval then lignite then coals here and this is anthracite right so horizontal axis says atomic oxygen to carbon ratio and vertical axis says atomic hydrogen to carbon ratio okay so if we see the values say for example o to c ratio is higher in case of biomass compared to the coals right that means if we see the calorific value of biomass which is lower than the calorific value of other coals having lower o to c ratio and lower h to c ratio so in conclusion what we can make the biomass contains more oxygen with respect to carbon than in coal that's what it is seen here in the figure and this influences the gasification process as gasification is a partial oxidation and second observation what we could conclude is fuel with high o2 c ratio have smaller heating values than those with low o2 c ratio right so here for the case of anthracite coal o2 c ratio is lower compared to biomasses also we can compare other fuels say for example if we make a pyrolysis process and we condense the oil and if we see the calorific value of the oil compared to the raw biomass then we could figure it out the change in calorific values okay so those kind of fuels can be compared in order to augmentation of its quality in terms of calorific values by using this van carvelen diagram so in case of biomass the oxygen present is not free and is bonded by covalent bonds in the polymeric cellulose hemicellulose and lignin and as i said this pyrolysis which results in the release of oxygenates comprising of number of functional groups like alcohol acids aldehydes ketones and esters okay so we have learned a very interesting plot by which we can characterize our fuel to what extent we can improve the quality of the fuel and also this will give you comparison with respect to the coals and other biofuels now the thermochemical conversion process 
can be classified based on desired end product and the processes. So, let us see how this can be classified based on our requirement. Say for example, we are interested to make some kind of torrified biomass or torrified coal, then our attempt is to do the process very slowly. That means, heating rate should be less than 10 degree Celsius per minute and also we must know what we really need. So, torrification is something like you know, when we require high quality solid fuels. When we desire liquid fuels, then what could be our attempt? The process is like fast pyrolysis or maybe flash pyrolysis or ultra rapid pyrolysis. So, we have to do the heating very fast. So, rate of heating if we have to quantify it has to be more than 1000 degree Celsius per minute. So, we have to do the process very fast so that we get the liquid oil and then we can characterize to be used in various applications including internal combustion engines. And when the desired product is a gaseous fuel then we will go for gasification process. We can also see all those processes in this figure, we have pyrolysis process, gasification process and combustion process. So, these all are thermochemical conversion process. So, when we consider combustion, it will generate a heat and that heat can be used to generate steam and then that can be used in running a steam turbine and then we can produce electricity. Of course, we can use the heat directly for generation of heat for thermal applications. For gasifications primarily what we will get is a fuel gas composition of carbon monoxide and hydrogen primarily. That gas can be burned in a combustor of gas turbine and then we can produce electricity by using gas turbine cycle. And also we can use engine maybe dual fuel engine or maybe 100 percent gas engine to produce electricity. And also if we condense the gas by using Fischer top technology, we can produce some kind of hydrocarbons which can be stored and transported for use in different places from the generation to the utilities. And product of pyrolysis are char, then bio oil and then some kind of gases. Okay. So, that gas can be used the way we can use for gasification. Bio oil we can store it and we can transport it for different applications and char if our source is biomass then it will be biochar which is a solid fuel okay, known as charcoal or biochar. Okay. So, this figure shows the conversion of different solid fuel to the usable forms with the help of different thermochemical processes. Now, let us learn the difference between combustion and gasification. Since our attempt is to learn more on gasifications, then we must know the basic difference between combustion and gasification. So, before that let us learn the photosynthesis process, what happens? in presence of solar radiation with atmospheric carbon dioxide and H2O, we can have glucose which is stored in the plants. And that plant if we consider for combustion by igniting, then what we can produce is carbon dioxide and H2O. That means, if we provide sufficient oxidizer or oxygen for complete combustion of all the element presents in the fuel, then it is known as combustion. And what we will get in the combustion process is carbon dioxide and water vapor. And of course, heat will be generated. And this is nothing but a chemical reaction. This can be seen if we consider oxygen of air because 
in air we have 21 percent oxygen and about 79 percent nitrogen. So, that is how we have written oxygen of air reacts with the combustible substances like fuel resulting in the formation of carbon dioxide and H2O with release of heat. So, if we consider the carbon which reacts with oxygen it will give carbon dioxide and heat. And again if we consider these reactions where hydrogen present in the fuel reacts with oxygen will give H2O this is water and some amount of heat. This can be also understood by plotting this kind of figure coal and air is introduced in the combustor and these are the products of combustion. Also if we consider methane which reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and H2O in case of combustion reaction. And same methane we consider and we provide insufficient oxygen for combustion which is known as partial combustion reaction or gasification. What we will get in the product side is carbon monoxide and H2. So, this part is reactant and this part is product. This is reactant and this is product and this is fuel and this is oxidizer okay. and these are the products. So, product of combustion are carbon dioxide and H2O and product of gasification are carbon monoxide and hydrogen. We also need to learn stoichiometric air requirement because we are introducing one term here called equivalence ratio. So, in order to understand the equivalence ratio we must know the air fuel ratio of stoichiometric equation as well as actual combustion equation. So, the theoretical air required to complete combustion of fuel results from the equation of stoichiometry of oxygen fuel reaction. And if combustion of stoichiometric reaction is complete then flue gas cannot have neither fuel nor oxygen. This point should be noted. So, if we consider this biomass having formula C6 H10 O5 reacts with air. So, here considering 21 percent oxygen in air and rest 79 is nitrogen that is how it is 3.76 that is 1 mole is contributing 3.76 mole of nitrogen. So, 1 mole of oxygen is contributing 3.76 mole of nitrogen that means 79 divided by 21 is 3.76. Then product of combustion are carbon dioxide H2O and nitrogen because all the elements what is present in the fuel has been combusted because it is a combustion equation. So, for complete combustion to occur air is always allowed in excess of stoichiometric that is theoretical air requirement. So, if we consider this fuel which reacts with air will give carbon dioxide H2O and nitrogen this is a stoichiometric equation this octane and actual combustion equation is about 150 percent theoretical air. So, it is more than 100 percent. So, here I am considering 50 percent excess air which means it is 150 percent theoretical air. So, if we consider this then we will get oxygen in the product side as well. Okay. So, this part is air and this part is fuel, this part is air or oxidizer and this is fuel. So, if we are interested to know the equivalence ratio which is defined as air fuel ratio of actual combustion equation to the air fuel ratio stoichiometric equation. So, if we do the calculation it is found to be about 1.49 and again we can visualize the same facts by providing lesser amount of air 
to the actual classification equation. So, if this is something like this, so it will transform to this kind of equation and of course, its equivalence ratio will be 0.5. So, normally for gasifications to happen appropriately, we keep the equivalence ratio in the range of about 0.25 to 0.35. So, now let us learn few things about its history which is discovered in 18th century in England and France. By 1850, town gas used for lighting lanterns in parts of England. During World War I, that is in 1914 to 1918, small gasifiers were used to operate vehicles, boats and train as well. In World War II, more than 700,000 wood gas generators, powered trucks, cars and buses were operated in Europe. After 1945, widespread availability of low cost oil, this technology was pushed into oblivion. In 1973, oil embargo and subsequent global oil crisis, gasification was again looked upon. After 2000, biomass gasification gained further momentum due to issues related to global warming, political instability of oil producing countries and shift towards renewables and carbon neutral fuels. So, you can see this kind of cars were operated during World War I and II. So, you can see at the back this is the gasifier and the gas what is generated is connected to the engine and that is how this car is operating and this picture is from Germany 1946. Now, let us learn about classifications of gasifiers. Primarily, these gasifiers are classified based on the interaction of gasifying agent and solid fuels. So, three primary classifications fixed bed, fluidized bed and entrained bed. Again fixed bed can be classified into three classes updraft, downdraft and cross draft based on the relative direction of flow of gasifying agent. Fluidized bed can be classified into two classes bubbling and circulating based on the velocity of gasifying agent. There are many issues in case of fixed beds like slagging and bed agglomeration, syngas exit blockage, slag mobility issues and refractory degradation. In case of fluidized bed gasifiers, bed agglomeration and defluidization is one of the issues and S deposition and fouling is another operational difficulties. In case of entrained bed, operational issues are slag mobility issues, refractory degradation, syngas cooler fouling and plugging. So, all class of gasifiers they are having their respective issues, but we need to overcome those issues by considering appropriate operating conditions as well as selecting appropriate fuels for the gasifier. Now, let us have a look about those gasifiers. This is downdraft gasifier, one of the fixed bed gasifiers. So, drying zone is the top, so feeding is done from the top and air is supplied from the sides. So, layer wise you can see drying, pyrolysis, combustion, reduction, this is the air speed. Initially, biomass is filled through this opening, we can remove this lid and feed the biomass. Once feeding is done, then we can hold the flame here and this system, this gas, it goes through the different processes like cleaning, cooling, 
and then goes to engine for electricity generation. So, initially engine is run with the diesel. So, that inlet manifold is connected to the gas line. So, when engine is on then there is a sucking effect because of that this air will suck. Okay. So, this limbs are designed in such a way that it will suck a measured quantity of air. So, initially it will come to this combustion zone where charcoal is placed for ignition. So, once it is ignited then heat will transfer through conduction, convection and radiation from here to the top side because biomass is placed at the top. Then what happened initially moisture will be removed followed by pyrolysis then combustion and then reduction. So, so many chemical reaction will take place and finally, what we will get is carbon monoxide, hydrogen and some amount of carbon dioxide methane. Okay. And of course, it is dependent on the kind of oxidizer we used for a particular set of operation. What I mean if we supply oxygen instead of air then we will not get nitrogen in the product side. Okay. So, that is how we can control the composition of producer gas and then it goes to the engine and we can produce electricity. So, in this case we can produce lesser amount of tar while generating product gas, but we need to cool and clean before introducing into the engine because that gas contains lot of unwanted particle which is not healthy for the engine. So, in updraft gasifier, so air goes from the bottom and solid will be here. So, this is also known as counter current gasifier. So, air blows up and solid flows down. So, that is how and here air and solid flows in the same direction that is why it is called co-current. So, fuel is feeding from the top and then lid is closed and combustion will take place here and gas is collected from the top and gas what is generated from this gasifier normally used for thermal applications and here gas is collected from the bottom and we have cross draft gasifier. So, air is supplied here fuel is fitted from the top and then gas is collected from the other side of the gasifier. So, flame is generated at the center and this is the schematic of a circulating fluidized bed gasifier. So, here air is introduced and there is a distributor plate. So, air flows through this distributor plate and then it will give lot of mixing it is a vigorous mixing will be there and then heat transfer will be there from the biomass which is at high temperature and from there gas will be generated after a lot of chemical reactions. Then the gas will carry solid particles as well because of that we need to have this kind of cyclone separator this is cyclone separator. The function of the cyclone separator is to decouple the solid and gas. So, gas will go out and solid will fall down and this is called one non mechanical valve or loop seal non mechanical valve or called loop seal. So, air is provided to provide agitation and also one distributor is here. So, that this unburned solid particle goes in and then it will continue in contributing the heat generation. So, here fine particles can also be used for power generation. So, this is bubbling fluidized bed as I said velocity of circulating fluidized bed that means the operating velocity of circulating fluidized bed is higher than the bubbling fluidized bed system. So, air is supplied from the bottom these are the distributor plate and vigorous mixing will be there and there is no 
cyclone separator. So, everything will happen in a reactor okay? and gas can be collected from the top. So, in entrain bed biomass and oxidizer are faded and reaction takes place at very high temperature and we can get the gas from the top. So, now let us learn the biomass gasification processes. Primarily it converts solid fuel to gaseous fuel of primary three compositions carbon monoxide, hydrogen and methane and it involves partial combustion of biomass and we can see four distinct processes in the gasifier drying, pyrolysis, combustion and reduction this plot as well. So, first drying will be done because drying will happen here once biomass is here lead is closed then heat is generated heat exchange will be there from the combustor to the upward side because biomass is present here above the combustion zone. So, up to 200 degree C moisture oil will be there that is drying process will continue and then followed by pyrolysis which will happen up to 600 degree C in this zone. There what happens? water vapor, methanol, acidic acid and tar will be generated. Okay. And then in the combustion zone because it is very hot, its temperature is varies from 700 to 1000 degree Celsius where carbon dioxide and H2O will be generated mostly. And then in the reduction zone what happens? This carbon again reacts with other materials and what we will get at the end is hydrogen and carbon monoxide. So, this will be collected from the sides of the bottom chamber. Okay. So, primarily we have got four distinct processes. This is combustion, the reduction will be here and then drying and pyrolysis will be carried out here. right? And these are the reactions which is taken place inside the gasifier. So, once we have provided the ignition then what happens the carbon which is present in the charcoal or biochar which reacts with oxygen will produce carbon dioxide and heat. And then in the other reaction like partial oxidation reaction the hydrogen which is present in the fuel which reacts with oxygen will produce H2O and some form of heat. And then the carbon what is present in the fuel as well as in the combustion zone reacts with carbon dioxide which will produce carbon monoxide. Then water gas shift reaction will be there like first carbon reacts with H2O it will produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen and these two are endothermic reaction and other reactions are exothermic where heat is generated and what I guess if reaction is carbon dioxide what is generated before reacts with hydrogen it will produce carbon monoxide and H2O and methane forming reaction is something like carbon reacts with hydrogen it will produce methane. So, to promote methane generation we need to provide catalyst and the temperature has to be more and pressure also has to be more. And in nutshell, if we provide fuel, maybe steam and air in the reactor, then so many chemical reactions will take place and finally, we will get this kind of products like carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, methane, H2O, then C2 plus, tar and fly ash. So, different biomass gasifier will give different percentage of conversion and tar content. So, tar is a critical issue. Now, why I am putting this figure? Because once we know the character of the fuel, then only we can set the condition for maximizing the biomass yield or maximizing the gas yield. So, that is how we need to do some kind of thermogeometric analysis by using the thermogeometric analyzer which tells about the degradation of biomass with respect to time and temperature. So, that way we can predict the behavior of 
the material in the particular reactor. So, the figure what I have shown here this is a downdraft biomass gasifier. So, practically this is the hopper where biomass is faded and this is the reactor part where all those reactions primarily taking place and you can see two limbs where we can provide the combustion here. So, combustion takes place. So, this is a circle bed. So, gas is collected from the sides and then you can see at the back there are filters, pores and file filters and then it goes through the chimney where we can hold a flame to know whether gas is generated or not. If gas is generated then we close the valve and then we supply to the engine for electricity generation. Also few things about fluidization. So, we can plot this kind of variation like pressure drop versus air velocity which change in air velocity how this pressure drop changes. So, we can also see the distinction between fixed bed and fluidized bed. So, up to here we can work with fixed bed after that you no know, particular will be fluidized and then as you go on increasing the velocity initially pressure drop will be more or less constant then it will increase and then it will decrease to 0. So, as far as functioning of fluidized bed is concerned. So, here you can see this yellow colored things these are nothing but you no know, one kind of catalyst to capture the sulfur. So, air is supplied then you no know, fuel is added and then if we increase the velocity this particle will move up and also during the time of moving up the conversion will take place and then unburned solid will come down again through this cyclone separator it will give this kind of swirling motion and then other gases will go up from the top. And this is the different regimes like if we take these solids okay, and if we slowly increase the velocity you can see this kind of behavior of the solid and air interaction. So, bubble formation will be there at certain point of time you can see this kind of things like you no know, higher size bubble will be at the top and then followed by smaller size bubble then it will burst if we increase the velocity further and then sometimes we will have turbulent fluidization. So, vigorous mixing will be there. Okay. So, this kind of things we need in order to have higher heat and mass transfer and for pneumatic conveying systems we need to increase further the velocity of the fluidization. So, particle will be dispersed because that particle has to be carried from bottom to the other side of the reactor. So, it shows the different regimes of fluidization. So, now let us discuss about the producer gas what is generated it contains carbon monoxide, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrogen along with tar and particulate matters. And because of that we need to clean and cool before introducing to the engine and this gas heating value is in the range of 4.5 to 6 megajoule per normal meter cube. And uh, this technology can be used for both thermal as well as power generation. Of course, sometimes we can use it for liquid fuel production as well. And this output of gasifier we can classify into two ways like cold gas efficiency and hot gas efficiency. So, you can see here cold gas efficiency and hot gas efficiency. In hot gas efficiency sensible heat is also considered, but cold gas efficiency is a sensible heat part is not considered. And also we can see the typical composition of producer gas hydrogen is varies from 12 to 20 percent, carbon dioxide is 9 to 15, carbon monoxide is 17 to 22 percent, methane is 2 to 3 percent and nitrogen is about 50 to 54 percent. The cold and hot gas efficiency is about 65 percent and 73 percent for dry biomass and it is goes down to about 53 percent 
and 62 percent respectively at moisture content of 40 percent. So, as moisture content decreases, so we can have this kind of change in cold and hot gas efficiencies. To know the caloric value of producer gas generated through gasification system, we can have this kind of Shankar calorimeter to monitor the caloric value. Right? So, here this is the flow meter and uh, we burn it and uh, we can uh, have water boiling test as well. From that we can also calculate the calorie value of producer gas. So, now let us discuss how to calculate this cold, hot and thermal efficiency. Suppose, if we consider say heat input and heat output. So, heat input may be C V of fuel if we consider say we have say 7, 5, 6, 6. 0.32 kilo calorie per kg and sensible heat in coal this may be 0, then we have enthalpy, enthalpy of water vapor in air air may be 9.93 kilo calorie per kg, then may be enthalpy of steam which is about 166. So, total it is found to be about 7742.25 kilo calorie. This is the heat input and output may be C V of dry producer gas. May be 5640 kilo calorie per kg and may be sensible heat because gas will be at higher temperature of dry producer gas maybe 932.8 kilo calorie and the enthalpy of water vapor in hot gas is equal to 81.6 kilo calorie per kg. Okay. So, if we have this data then how to calculate this cold gas efficiency and hot gas efficiency. So, for cold gas efficiency as per the definition, so only we are going to take care of the calorie values, this value and the total heat input which is something like this. So, it will be 5640 to 7742.25. So, which will give you a value of 72.84 percentage. This is cold gas efficiency. Then for hot gas efficiency, we need to consider the 
sensible heat as well. So, it will be something like 5640 plus 932 point 8 plus 81.6 this all the components of course, we can edit here like losses heat losses. which is about 1087.85 kilo calorie per kg because heat has to be balanced in both the sides and uh, here it will be 7742.25. So, here you can see sensible heat and enthalpies are also added in the hot gas efficiency which defines the hot gas efficiency 85.94 percent is and if we are interested about thermal efficiency that can also be calculated which is nothing but 5640 plus only enthalpy will be considered here. No sensible heat of dry producer gas will be considered to 7742.25 which will be about 73.9 percentage which is equivalent to 74 percentage. Okay. Now, let us move on to the other aspects like tar. Tar is a complex mixture of condensable hydrocarbons and the mixture is varies from one ring aromatic compounds to complex polyaromatic hydrocarbons in short it is PAH and this tar causes problems in the process equipment as well as the engines and turbines. So, that is why we need to have a very sophisticated cooling and cleaning system before introducing to the engines or combustion chamber of a gas turbine. The formation of tar depends on feedstock, gasifying agent and also type of gasifier. And this tar can be mitigated with the help of two methods, one is primary other one is secondary. In primary method normally optimizing the operating conditions in one way like temperature, pressure, equivalence ratio, residence time and other operating parameters and by using catalyst in the bed like calcine dolomites and magnesite zeolites and that kind of material and also by modifying the gasifier. So, there are three aspects we can do under primary methods and in secondary methods what we do cracking of tars in the downstream like it may be thermally or catalytically. But thermally it is a very intensive uh, energy intensive process we have to maintain at very high temperature. And mechanical method includes like cyclone, buffer filter, ceramic filters, then fabric filters and so on and so forth. And it looks something like this, it is a very viscous black is black in color. So, if the percentage of tar is more then it is very difficult to operate the system. Also not only to the problem associated with the engine, but also in the equipment itself. So, now if we see the pilot scale project then what are the components involved? Starting with pre-treatment of feedstock, first we need to pre-treat, maybe sometimes we are interested to augment the quality of the fuel by torification, so that torrified biomass we can use as a feedstock to the gasifier. And then we need boiler to produce steam which has to be introduced in the gasifier system as a gasifying agent to augment the product gas composition like hydrogen and carbon monoxide and maybe methane. So, this is the reactor as a whole all the components we may call as reactor and then once gas is generated it goes through this cyclone separator and then cooling and then cleaning 
process. So, this is the water treatment unit, water is sprinkled from the top and then gas will be introduced here tangentially and then we can collect the cooled gas and we can pass through a biomass filter and we can see the flare, we can hold the flame here if we confirm that blue flame is exist then we just close this valve and open this valve goes through these back filters maybe coarse and fine filters and then it goes to the engine generator assembly for generation of electricity. So, this is the reactor part, this is the cooling and cleaning part and finally, we have engine generator part. So, cleaning and complete removal of particulate material and tar is essential for IC engine application. For spark ignition engine, it can operate with producer gas alone and for compression ignition engine, it operates in drain fuel mode. And as I said before, the first table shows the maximum limit of tar which can be present in the producer gas for utilizing in power generation applications. It may be IC engine, may be gas turbine, may be molten carbonate fuel cell or may be solid oxide fuel cells. So, particulate matter should be less than 10 microns in case of IC engines, less than 5 in case of gas turbines and less than 3 microns in case of molten carbonate fuel cell and solid oxide fuel cells. Tar we can say less than 100 milligram per nm cube and less than 10 in case of gas turbines and we can see for other metals and species like alkali metal then nitrogen species then sulfur species and halide. So, these are very very important when we are using gas for electricity generation through IC engine gas turbine or maybe fuel cells. And this table shows tar and particulate level of different gasifiers. So, updraft giving how much is the particulate, then tar, then downdraft you can see here, okay. then fluidized beds, this is bubbling bed and this is circulating fluidized bed. So, we must know the maximum limit which are permitted for generating electricity. We can take one more example like a biomass gasifier is used to run a compression ignition engine. The engine operates in the dual fuel mode with 80 percent diesel replacement. The gasifier engine system produces 350 kilowatt of power. We need to calculate the biomass feeding rate to the gasifier if the efficiency of the engine is 35 percent and calorie value of biomass is 16800 kilojoule per kg. We can consider the efficiency of gasifier as 75. So, how to proceed this? We can make three block diagrams. So, maybe this is gasifier, then gas cleaning unit and this is also part of gasifier system and we have engine. Okay. So, our requirement of power is 350 kilowatt and we know the efficiency of engine is 35 percent. So, here how much energy is available here, we need to find out like it is 350 divided by 0.35 is the energy which is required to run the engine is something like 1000 kilowatt. Okay. And 
it is said that 80 percent diesel replacement that means 20 percent is contributing from diesel and 80 percent is coming from producer gas PG. So, 80 percent of 1000 kilowatt is 800 right. So, 800 is coming from 800 kilowatt is coming from this gasifier unit right and rest is coming from this diesel ok. So, again we know the calorific value of biomass is 16800 kilo joule per kg ok. So, we need to find out what is the mass or mass flow rate. Okay. So, again we know this system efficiency this dotted line that is gasifier plus screening these are connected. So, this unit efficiency is 75 percentage. Okay. So, 800 is supplied from this gasifier unit. So, amount of input energy required will be 800 divided by 0.75 which is equal to 1066.7 kilowatt ok. So, this much of energy we need from the biomass to produce 350 kilowatt of power ok. So, we know this mass of fuel multiplied by calorific value of the fuel this is like biomass this is biomass from where we have to produce this energy this is biomass which is equal to 1066.7 kilowatt. So, we know the value of C V of biomass. So, mass of biomass will be 1066.7 divided by what is the calorie value is 16800 right. So, this will give a value of 228.6 kg per hour. So, in order to produce 350 kilowatt we need to burn biomass at a rate of 228.6 kg per hour ok. Now, let us also learn about the applications. The main applications of biomass gasifiers are soft powers which may be obtained by using spark ignition engine or maybe compression ignition engine and also we can use the gas for thermal applications. And of course, there are some issues with the engines for 100 percent PG mode then if we talk about SI engine the gasoline engines derated to about 40 to 50 percent due to low energy density of producer gas which accounts for about 30 percent power losses. And CI engine on dual fuel mode this producer gas cannot ignite by itself hence 15 to 20 percent of the original consumption diesel required ok. And for direct heat applications we can burn the producer gas in burners to produce energy for different applications. Maybe we can use it for biscuit factories or maybe tea industries in the state of Assam primarily. And also we can produce chemicals which is something like methanol we can produce and also we can think of fissure drop for good quality hydrocarbons. So, this fissure drop is something like we have to condense this carbon monoxide and hydrogen at very high pressure. It goes from 1 bar to about 150 bar and its temperature is about 150 to 300 degree C in presence of metal catalyst.
where you can produce hydrocarbon chains and that can be transported for different applications. So, we will discuss something about uh, advanced gasification technologies called integrated gasification and combined cycles. First, let us see the Rankine cycle already we know we have to produce heat in the furnace and then we need to produce steam and that will be expanded in the turbine and then we have to use the condenser so that we can condense the steam to the water and then we have to pump the water in the same loop. Okay. So, in case of combining two plant like Breton cycle and Rankine cycle, so the exit of the gas turbine can be again used for generation of heat for generation of steam by using that heat to run a steam turbine. Okay. This is gasifier, fuel is supplied in the gasifier and gas is generated and we need to clean it and we have to combust it in the combustion chamber of a gas turbine and we generate electricity and then this exit of the turbine which is at very high temperature okay, where we have a heat exchange from here to the water and we produce steam that will be expanded in the turbine and then we produce electricity again. So, that means we are connecting two cycles gas turbine cycles and steam turbine cycles that is Breton cycle and Rankine cycle. So, in both the cases we will get power and exit of the gas turbine we are using to raise the temperature of water to produce steam and then finally, to produce power. So, it looks something like this if we plot in a temperature entropy diagram. The what advantages we will get? We will get high efficiency, low carbon dioxide emission and S volume, fuel flexibility and highly reliable system. Also, we can see like working of integrated gasification and combined cycle. So, we have this combustor where we can generate heat and then this part is the gasifications like coal is added here again and these are the coils where we can recover the heat of the gas and then sometimes this gas carries this unburned coal particles and that will be transported again to the combustor for complete recovery of the fuel. Okay. So, it looks something like this that means we are utilizing all the heat generated in the combustor. Also, we can think of integrated gasification fuel cell cycles. So, this is the gasifier unit, fuel is applied and oxidizer is supplied and since this gas is at high temperature, there will be exchange of heat and that heat could be used for generation of steam in the heat recovery steam generator and then we can have steam turbine to produce electricity and the gas what is generated which is producer gas we can purify it and we can use it in fuel cell for electricity generation and then the other gases which is not used in the fuel cell conversion process can be combusted and generate heat which can be expanded in a gas turbine to generate electricity. Okay. And we can have other unit as well which is also operated by the power what is generated by using fuel cell, gas turbine and steam turbine. So, here what is presented is something like all kinds of heat we can use for generation of electricity and generation of steam for maximizing the waste heat utilization. We can take one more practical problem say a 3.5 kilowatt capacity diesel engine is run on dual fuel mode with biogas and producer gas combined to generate electricity for 5 hours during peak load hours. The flow rate of biogas and producer gas is maintained in such a way that the flow rate of 
producer gas is 11.5 percent more than that biogas and brake thermal efficiency of the engine is about 23.5 percent during dual fuel mode operation and was able to replace 85 percent of the diesel by gaseous fuel compared to 1.25 kg per hour flow rate of diesel during single fuel mode or conventional mode. Considering the calorie value of diesel, biogas and producer gas to be 40 to 19 and 5 megajoule per kg respectively, we need to determine the size of the biogas digester and gasifier for successful operation of the engine. And considering the density of biogas producer gas as 1.25 and 1.11 kg per cubic meter respectively. So, these values are given to us. Now, let us solve this problem. So, we know that for dual fuel mode, for dual fuel mode, brake thermal efficiency which is dual fuel mode DFM is something like BP brake power multiplied by 3600 divided by mass flow rate of diesel then CV of diesel plus mass flow rate of biogas multiplied by CV of biogas plus mass flow rate of producer gas PZ CV of PZ. Okay. So, this may be equation number 1 and if we substitute the values of brake thermal efficiency which is 23.5 we can have 235 and brake power is 3.5 which is given to us this 3600 then we will have this M D then calorific value M B Z biogas multiplied by C V B Z producer gas then C V P Z. Okay, this may be equation number two. So also we know the amount of diesel replaced by gaseous fuel is 85 percent. So, now, so percentage of replacement is equal to this is single fuel mode then mass of diesel in dual fuel mode divided by mass of diesel in single fuel mode. So, once we substitute this 0.85 here and then other values 1.25 is the single fuel mode and then we will have this is dual fuel mode and this is single fuel mode. So, each value is 1.25. So, from here you can find out what is the value of diesel under dual fuel mode which is found to be 0 0.1875 kg per hour. So, if we use this in equation 2 then what we will get is m dot b z is equal to 1.895 kg per hour. This is the value we will get. So, I can write it here for your understanding how we have got this value 235 is equal to 3.5 into 3600 divided by 0 0.1875 multiplied by we have 42000 plus 
this is B z multiplied by calorie value is known to us it is 19,000 then plus m dot P z which is nothing but this is 5000 and this is nothing but 1.15 times B z. Okay? So, that is how we can find out it is B z. Okay? And once we have find out the flow rate of biogas, we can also find out the flow rate, flow rate of P z that is producer gas will be P z will be 1.15 times the B z. So, if we substitute this value here then it will be 2.178 kg per hour. Okay. So, now what could be the specific biogas flow rate? Specific biogas flow rate which is nothing but we have 1.895 this value divided by 3.5 which will give you a value of 0.5414 kg per kilowatt hour. Again, we can convert it to cubic meter per kilowatt hour by dividing the density of the biogas. So, if we divide this by density of biogas, so it will be something like 0 0.5414 divided by 1.25 which will be equal to 0 0.4331 cubic meter per kilowatt hour kilowatt hour. Okay. And from here we can calculate the total biogas required which will be equal to 0 0.4331 multiplied by 17.5. So, how did you get 17.5? It is 3.5 kilowatt for 5 hours. So, which will be nothing but 17.5 kilowatt hour. So, if we multiply this then what we will get a value of 7.379 cubic meter. This is the biogas requirement. Okay. Also, we know we know 1 kg of cattle down generates about 0 0.04 cubic meter of biogas. So, total cattle dung required for the plant will be 7.379 divided by 0 0.04 which is equal to 189.47 kg. Now, we will do the calculation for producer gas. So, this much of cow dung is required for the plant because this plant is composed of two components producer gas and biogas. So, biogas we have calculated that means the amount of feedstock required to run the biogas to generate that amount. Now, we will do the calculation for producer gas the specific producer gas flow rate will be something like you have 2.178 divided by 3.5 divided by density is 1.11 which will be equal to 0 0.56 cubic meter 
per kilowatt hour. And if we assume the calorific value, calorific value of wood is 1 6 megajoule per kg and the efficiency of the gasifier say 50 percent then what you can calculate is the wood consumption rate consumption rate will be how much it will be 2.178178 multiplied by 5 is the calorie bill of the gas this is the gas specific flow rate and then this is 5 divided by this is flow rate and this is the calorie bill of the gas and then efficiency is 0 0.5 here and calorie value is 16 megajoule okay, per kg. So, once we do the calculation it is found to be 1.361 kg per hour. So, total quantity quantity of wood required will be 1.361 for 5 hours it will be 6.8 kg. So, biomass required will be 6.8 kg, but the countdown required will be about 100 and 89 kg or close to 190 kg. So, system was something like we have gasifier, gasifier then we have biogas plant, biogas plant and then we have engine. So, these are connected here and then we, from here we are trying to get 3.5 kilowatt of energy. So, in order to produce this much of energy, we need about 190 kg of cow dung and about 7 kg of wood to produce 3.5 kilowatt of energy for 5 hours. So, this way we can go for different capacities of plant and we can design as per the requirement. So, now I will just speak something about challenges like biomass supply chain management is one of the challenges, biomass pretreatment, then gas cleaning and conditioning before introducing to the engines and turbines. Then there are some problems associated with the system like tower formation, agglomeration, low gas heating values etc. Then environmental impacts will be there, then operational hazards are also there if we do not maintain it properly. Then of course, there are some generic barriers like institutional barriers and policy need to be refined, informational barriers lack of awareness, then financial barriers, then policy barriers lack of government policies, then market barriers. So, in order to succeed these parameters we need to look into comprehensively. Now, we can summarize what we have discussed today. Primarily, we have discussed the thermochemical conversion and gasification routes, how we can generate electricity and also it is confirmed that biogas gasification yields a versatile product gas and this technology is established over 2 century old and practical applications of biomass gasification shows applicability in power generation and thermal energy production. Treatment of tar is one of the challenges in case of gasification technology. Also challenges exist 
in supply chain management, performance enhancement and product gas cleaning where research and development is required. As a whole, biomass gasification is a promising technology of renewable and sustainable energy generation. So, broadly we have covered all the thermochemical conversion processes in this lecture and also we have solved some of the interesting problem to strengthen understanding about the design of thermochemical reactors. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much for watching this video.